Here in this video, we're going to take a look at how to estimate grounds maintenance contracts using GoLMN's estimating tool. So hopefully you've already watched the videos on labor and equipment and work area templates for estimating because that's certainly going to help you a lot when you're watching this video. Here we're just going to look specifically at building the estimate for grounds maintenance contracts in a couple of different ways like all inclusive, build per visit, maybe some time and materials examples. We'll take a look at how to build a couple of different types of estimates so that you know how to set it up for your different customers. So first I'm going to go right to LMN. And the important part here is to go to estimates, service estimates. There's two types of estimates. There's standard and service. Standard is for construction work. Service is for maintenance work. And it does matter because service has number of visits inside it and, and standard does not. So standard is going to assume you're going to go in, you're going to do the work and you're done. Service is going to assume you're going to go in, you're going to do the work so many number of times. Now it might be one time like a spring cleanup, or you could also set the number of visits to 40 if you cut 40 weeks of the year. So we'll take a look at that in a second, but you wanna make sure that you're using service estimates when you're estimating maintenance or recurring work, work you're gonna go back and repeat a number of times. Snow work would also fall into this example. At this point, you're probably gonna to wanna to use the add new button to create a new estimate. I've already got a few estimates created, so I'm gonna open up one of those just to start it off quickly. I'm opening this Mary Jones estimate. Now the client's name is Mary Jones. The address is her job address and the billing address is where the invoices go. They could be the same or they could be different. The project name is the name of the project and I've called it Summer Maintenance 2015 All Inclusive. Typically I wouldn't put All Inclusive in here. I'm only doing that because I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples in this video. But I do like having the year in the project name because if we hold Mary Jones year after year after year and her prices change, I certainly don't want to all have the name Jones Residence Maintenance. It's going to be difficult to know which year it's for or who it's for. So if I put Summer Maintenance 2015, I know clearly this is the contract for the summer work in the year of 2015. Estimate ID will be a randomly generated number from the system for you. And status will help you track the estimate along the sales pipeline. Is it being estimated? Is it waiting to be approved internally? Have you proposed it to the customer and are waiting? It's been lost or you won it and it's in progress. Whatever your uh, sales pipeline needs to look like, you can set up estimate statuses any way you want to see them. Simply go to the estimate setup menu and estimate statuses and that's where you can set up a list that makes sense for your company. Now, one of the things I like to do early on in the maintenance process for lawn maintenance work anyway, is measure the site. So there's a button here called measure. And what that'll do is open up a Google map to the address that you entered there. Now let's say this here area is the area Mary Jones wants us to mow. All I need to do is click around the perimeter of the area. You can zoom in as close as you need to get to make sure it's done right. Once you get your shape roughly drawn, you can always click and drag one of these points to get really detailed. So if you found the first time around you weren't quite as detailed as you like to be, every time you click and drag a new button will appear allowing you to get very precise around all your corners and measurements. Now I'm going to make this a simple measurement but assuming this is done I can look down here to see my area both in square feet and in acres. So this area is about 20,500 square feet. Now I've got my property measured and I'm ready now to start my estimate. Scrolling down here, this is the estimate summary. These are the overhead factors that are coming in from your budget. So when you created your estimate, it asked you what budget do you want to use? And you picked it. That's where it's getting the overhead equipment, materials, and subcontracting markups from. It's also getting the net profit or desired net profit from your budget. So if your budget says you're going to make 4% or is gunning for a 4% profit, that's the profit by default it's going to add to this estimate. If your budget has a net profit of 10%, then it's going to assume you want to try to add a 10% net profit to this estimate, and we'll do that as well. That's why it's so important to have your budget set up correctly before you jump into estimating. Now up here you can change budgets. So if you did happen to pick the wrong one, or you wanted to switch to a budget next year, you can just use the change budget button, and you can apply a different budget to this estimate and it will recalc the overhead markups and profit margins based on the change. Let's get into actual estimating now. 
The first thing I'm doing is just shrink these to make it a little easier to work with. And you can do that just by clicking on the name there. The work summary section is where you're going to build your cost and price list. And the first thing we might need to do in a summer maintenance contract is a spring cleanup. So over here, I'm going to go add service. Service name, spring cleanup. Number of visits, typically one, it might be more for you, but most companies get the spring cleanup done in one visit. Now build as can be set as per visit, per season, or per hour. I'm going to set this to season, assuming that the contract we're building here is a seasonal contract. I'll show you some examples of some other ones after this, but let's start with a seasonal contract. The cost code is going to be landscape maintenance. This cost code again is the service item in QuickBooks or the accounting cost code that you're going to use to lump the revenue from this job into. So basically all the revenue I earn from this job is going to get cost to the cost code landscape maintenance. And all the costs I incur for labor and materials, etc., are also going to go in landscape maintenance. So we can look at the profitability of landscape maintenance work. So we'll click OK. And now it's created a new service called Spring Cleanup with one visit that's billed per season. What we need to do now is add what we need for Spring Cleanup. So here I'm going to go add labor. And let's say I'm going to need a maintenance crew. I'm going to go to add equipment. Now they're not gonna need their crew trailer for spring cleanup. They're not gonna need the mowers and all that kind of stuff. More likely they might need a crew truck with a five ton dump and a dump trailer. So I will add that one to the estimate. Then we're gonna go to materials. Typically I wouldn't have much materials for spring cleanup, but I might have yard waste as a disposal. So I'm gonna add that as well. And let's say that's about it for our spring cleanup. I'll hit okay. And now the labor equipment and materials are underneath the spring cleanup item and they each have a quantity of one, meaning that they're waiting for me to tell how long things may take. So let's start with the labor hours. For example, let's say we looked at the spring cleanup job and it was gonna take a crew of four, three hours to complete. So four persons for three hours each, because the crew's gonna be there for three hours, is a total of 12 man hours. And it's really important that's the number I use for estimating. Don't forget, your accounting system can't do job costing in crew hours. And the cost and the rate that we calculated in the labor section is not for the whole crew, it's per man on the crew. So anytime we're estimating, we have to focus on man hours. So when I come up with my estimate here, I want to think how long is the crew going to be there and how many persons in the crew. And I'll multiply those two numbers together to get my total man hours. Now the crew in the dump trailer, oftentimes we see the mistake of people entering at 12 as well. Don't forget though, the crew in the dump trailer is not in man hours. It's a piece of equipment. And I don't need a crew in a dump trailer for each single person on the crew. If it's a four person crew that's gonna be there for three hours, then the dump truck's just gonna be there for three hours. We only need one truck. So I may have 12 man hours and three dump truck hours, but that's because I have four persons and one dump truck. Makes sense? Once you get your head around that, it's pretty simple. And next is yard waste. So we'll also estimate we're gonna take six yards of yard waste out of the property. And now I've got my estimate for spring cleanup. Down here, you can see I've got my uh, price, my break even, and my cost to spring cleanup. I've got a 10% profit margin built into it, and that is coming from the budget that we selected. And we're ready to move on to the mowing. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go add service again, and this time we're gonna do lawn mowing. Number of visits I'm gonna say is 32. Now, if you're watching this in different areas of the country or world, this could be more, it could be less. But what I'm saying for this contract is we're gonna estimate 32 cuts in, in the term of the contract. It's billed as seasonal. And again, we'll get to this later, but for this job here, we're gonna assume that it's an all-inclusive price. And my cost code is maintenance. So I'm gonna click okay. And now it's created lawn mowing, 32 visits. One thing that's important to remember here is now that this knows it's 32 visits, all I'm doing in here is coming up with the time per visit. So it'll take this time per visit, multiply it by 32 to give me my seasonal contract. But what I'm about to add, the labor and the equipment, I'm not trying to estimate the entire year. I'm just trying to estimate the time per cut. So I could add labor and add equipment just like we did with the spring cleanup. But if you've set up templates, it's a whole lot easier if you go add template. Here's my template and I'm gonna scroll down. And remember I had one called average, I had one called difficult, and I had one called easy for lawn maintenance. I'll assume this is an average one. I'll go over here and I'll add that. 
Now it says crew maintenance and crew truck. So I've got my labor and I've got my truck. Now I just need to figure out how long things are gonna take. So I'll click the calculator and this job was 20,500 square feet. And it's gonna tell me it's gonna take 0.41 hours or about half an hour if I round up to the nearest half. Now I gotta get the stuff off the truck and back on the truck. You may also decide to add a little bit like 0.2 hours to compensate for loading and unloading equipment. Or you may already have that built into your cutting calculator, the rates that you, you chose per square feet, how, many, uh, how long it would take you to cut per square foot. So it depends on how you estimate. I did add a little bit of a premium here. So I've got 0.7 hours for the crew. Now let's say this is a two person crew. I don't need 0.7 hours for the truck because it's a two, if, the, if it's 0.7 man hours, then really, and two people per crew, really my truck hours are only 0.35. So I hit okay. So don't forget the truck hours and the man hours aren't always gonna match. In fact, they're almost never gonna match unless you have a one man crew. In this case, it's a two man crew. So I need the truck for 0.35 hours. Two guys will be there and they'll get that work done. So now that I've added the lawn mowing, I can look at my price per cut, which is 33.59 and my price per season. So all 32 visits is gonna be just over $1,000 at a 10% profit margin. If I thought that was too steep and I wanted to back off my profit margin, I can simply click the button here and change that and click the button here and change that and I'll get new pricing calculated per visit. Now next up, I might have mulching as part of this job. So let's take a look at that. We'll add that service and we'll call it mulching. And it's one visit of mulching. I'm not gonna do multiple visits of mulching a year. And this is gonna be seasonal and I'll call this as part of my landscape maintenance cost code. And again, we created a mulching template, so I'm gonna add a template. Scroll down here, we're gonna pick mulching by hand. This time I'm gonna pick black mulch. So I'll click this and I'll say they've got 1800 square feet of beds. And it works out that we're gonna need 18 yards of mulch to get this done. Now that I know I need 18 yards of mulch, I'm gonna go up to my crew and type in 18 cubic yards and it tells me that's gonna take 12 man hours to complete. Now, if that's a three man crew doing this job, means we're gonna have a truck there for four hours. A three man crew for four hours is gonna be 12 total hours. And I can get rid of the brown mulch and get rid of the natural mulch because we don't need it and click okay. And now I've got a price for the mulching. Cost is 937, break even is 1,178. And the price I wanna get for the mulch is about $1,500. Now I've got spring cleanup, lawn mowing, mulching. And if I go up here to the estimate summary, you can start to see this estimate total coming to fruition. Total hours so far that I've estimated, cost of goods sold, 60% or just a little over. My gross profit on this bid is about 37.3%. Here's how much overhead I've recovered, my break even, and what we hope to bring in as net profit. Now my budget was 10, but my net profit is going for 15.9. And the difference is, some of my materials, and I know exactly which one here, if I go to edit, mulching is set to a higher than normal profit margin. And that's something that you can play with on your own. If you always wanna have 10%, you can leave everything at default. But in this particular example, we know we can get a little more from mulch, so I cranked up the profit margin, and that's why this average profit isn't an even 10, it's a little higher. Most of the stuff is at 10, but the mulch is higher. Once we repeat that process for the entire estimate, we're done and we're ready to print a proposal. So I'm gonna to go to client information and go up here and pick the proposal I wanna print. Now you can experiment with these. There's a bunch of different layouts, but I know this particular job we're bidding as a seasonal contract. And you can see right down here, the total value of this contract is 3,376. I wanna split it up under eight payments. And in this case, it might be eight months, or if it's bi-monthly, you could do 16 payments. But once you set your number of payments, then you can calculate how much each payment amount is worth. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna pick my proposal per season pricing. I'll hit print and it'll generate a PDF. And in it, we'll have my spring cleanup and a price, my lawn mowing and a price, all the specifications from my lawn mowing. Now remember, I didn't type that in. It came over from the template because we had that created in our template. Mulching, price, the specs for mulching, and then at the very bottom here, seasonal package, all service, eight payments of 422.11. And there you go. Now you've got your maintenance proposal. Now, for those of you who do work on per visit, 
I'm going to open up another example proposal, same name. I've already set up this one, but notice everything in here is set as per season like we had it before. What you want to do is set these to per visit. So if you are going to build a client at the completion of each service, and you're only going to build them for the services completed, these are going to be set to per visit. So I'll save that now. And that's really all I need to change. You can see here my total value of the contract is estimated at 11,100, but my seasonal value is zero because I have nothing set to per season. Everything is billed when it gets completed. When I print this estimate proposal for the client, I'm going to choose something like per visit pricing. And when I hit print, it's going to show them the total price of each service on a per visit basis. And I didn't enter any comments or customer notes in these ones. You could do that, obviously, if you, if you had those entered, they'd be typed underneath there. But that's how to get a per visit price for clients. Now, it's not always so black and white either. Sometimes some things are seasonal, some things are per visit, and then it's just as easy to do that as well. You can set up a mixed contract. So here's the same example. Everything down here is set to per season. If things are mixed, like we do upon completion, all you need to do is go set the services that you want to do on completion to build as per visit. So let's say, for example, the uh, mowing is part of the contract, but the fertilizing is done at the end of each service. So I'll set that to per visit. And let's say, for example, the spring cleanup is billed by the hour. So I'll go to here and I'll set that to per hour. And we'll do the fall cleanup per season. We'll leave that as part of the season. So now I've got a mixed uh, bag of different things that are inclusive and not inclusive. So we'll hit save here. And then I'll go up and I'll print my estimate. But this time I've got some stuff as per visit, some stuff as seasonal. So what I want to do is choose the mixed billing proposal. And if I hit that example and print that out, now you're going to see spring cleanup per hour per unit prices listed below. So it shows here the maintenance crew goes out at $50 an hour and the disposal per yard of waste is also $50 an hour. The mowing is per season and there's the total price per season. The fertilizing is per visit and the total price per visit and the fall cleanup is per season and that's the total price per season. So the total price of all seasonal services is this or eight payments of this plus applicable taxes. And there's some other layouts you can print. Maybe you want to show the information a little bit differently. You can experiment with the proposal layouts that work best for your company and oftentimes you may change it depending on the type of estimate you're showing to a customer. But now that you've seen how to build a maintenance estimate, use templates, and use the proposal reports, you should be able to build now complete maintenance estimates for your clients relatively quickly and definitely very accurately. If you have more questions on building estimates for maintenance, feel free to email us at support at goelemn.com. And if you ever want to come out to one of our workshops and learn hands-on how to build your budget and estimate effectively, then go to www goelmn.com slash events and all our workshops webinars and free training events at our office are listed online there sign up and we'll see you soon